Hello, for this video I would like to show you a technique I like to use when rendering 360 turntables. This involves creating a infinite gradient backdrop and a shadow catcher floor plane. We're also going to look at setting up the node groups for both Cycles and EV. Let's get started. Okay, let's first import our model. Here I'm just going to link in Turbo, the robot, and I'm just going to do a, little, a few adjustments to get him into the center and add a few lights. Okay, let's set up our turntable with our camera selected and a view that looks quite nice. I'm just going to go with here. Let's do Control alt 0 so our camera jumps to view. Not the best alignment, but we can adjust that with grab ZZ. Kind of looks good. Rotate it a little bit here. Oops. Okay, it looks good. And with our cursor in the center of the world, I'm just going to do Shift A and add an empty sphere. And we can adjust the scale of the sphere just to make it a little less intrusive. Okay, with the camera now selected and the sphere selected last, I'm just going to Alt P and Object, Parent to Object, and Keep Transforms. Now we're going to do some keyframing here. Hit I on the keyboard and then rotate. And then let's take it to the standard 250 frames and do rotate Z 360. And then I and rotate. You could also slap on auto key. And in our timeline here, we're just going to tap T and do linear. So we have a nice, smooth rotation without any ramping up or easing in and out. Okay, the background. Um, let's make sure we're in material preview here and both scene lights and scene world is checked so we can see the progress. I'm just going to slide out another window and jump to scene editor and change it from object to world. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. And the first thing it's good to do is take our background, duplicate it, add a mix shader. And connect these up and add a light path where we use the camera rays into our factor. And there we can see we can affect our ambient without affecting our background. Let's do pink. Nice. Disco. Um, so in our first background slot, I'm just going to load up an HDRI using the environment texture. And so we just so we can have slightly better reflections. And for our second material slot, the one that will be visible in the background, I'm going to add in a gradient texture with the gradient set to linear. As we can see, that's how it comes in initially. So what we need to do is we need to have a play around with the vector input. Uh, now I'm using, um, I'm pretty sure most of you have this add-on going anyway, but it's the, I just activated the Node Wrangler add-on to add some of these shortcuts. The shortcut being Control T. This is just adds this nice chain of mapping node. And there we can rotate about the Y. Yes. Let's jump back into camera view. I'm just going to move it down along the Z and scale it also. Okay, it's looking like quite a nice gradient. Now we can chuck in a color ramp between these two things. I'm going to go with, because we've got this sort of blue rim light here, let's go with, start chucking in some colors. Okay. 
Okay. And that's our gradient background sorted out. Okay, now for the floor, again, our cursor is in the world center. Let's add a mesh circle under the circle options here. I'm going to keep it at 32. Fill type, let's go with triangle fan. I'm going to scale that up a little bit as well. Uh, before we do anything else, I'm just going to jump to solid mode. And I'm going to go into vertex paint and select black color and just paint the vertex right in the middle there. Now what we can do with our shader window still open, jump to object, I'm just going to go back onto material view here, jump to the material tab, give it a new material, let's call it floor and also make sure that our blend mode is on alpha blend. Um, I'm going to kill the principal node. I'm going to duplicate the material out output. And one's going to be EV and the other's going to be cycles. Now let's start with the EV one because we're in the material preview here, which uses EV. And I'm just going to start by adding some diffuse textures. Duplicate one white, one black. And the shader to RGB, super awesome node. So you can see what that's doing if we select the right one. That is just converting the diffuse material, including the shadow casting, into its own RGB shader, which is pretty sweet. Let's add a color ramp to that as well, just to accentuate the effect. And that is going to drive a shader, a mix shader. It's going to drive the factor. And in the other two slots, we're going to use the diffuse and a transparent. Cool. You can already see what we're going for here. Everything else is transparent except for the shadow cast. But we have this pretty horrible edge. So we're going to use the vertex color that we created. And we're going to add it between these two nodes using a math. I'm going to clamp the values too, just in case anything dodgy happens. Factor. All right, now we've just created a nice fall off for the shadow. It's starting to look pretty good. Might just tweak the it's looking a bit too dark. Okay, that's Eevee done. Let's jump on to the cycles one, which is considerably easier. Gonna take our diffuse, bring it on down, plug it into the surface. Check out our object tab uh, and also check that we are actually on the render engine. Otherwise, these settings won't appear. That took me a lot longer to work out than I like to admit to. Um, and now under visibility, we can choose shadow catcher. So let's just do a little test here. Okay, pretty cool. But let's do our little... Um, transparency, uh, our fall off trick with the same thing here. Let's use the exact same node. Whoop. Cool. And just for fun, as it's now Blender 2.9, let's switch on viewport denoising. Yay, I don't have an RTX. GPU, but it's doing it now for my old GPU. And that's about it, really. I'll put a blend file with the background elements, everything but the robot, basically, up on uh, my Patreon if you want to download that to save setting up all the nodes and stuff. And yeah, I'm going to do a number of other little tutorials, I think, with this robot character because it's a huge amount of fun to play with. And I've learned a lot while creating it also. Thanks for watching.